The goal of this video is to build a card class in Java. We will do a second video that talks about building a deck of cards. So you'll be able to you know, use that to play games. Uh, and the other video that we will build is one to show how we can build a graphical user interface or a GUI to show our cards. So <clears throat> whenever you're designing a class, the very first thing that you need to do is decide what's the name for my class. Now in this case, I look at the, the objects in front of me and they are all instances of cards. So the name that I chose for my class is card. Okay, so what we're going to start building on the right hand side of the screen here is a class diagram. Um, these are defined in the unified modeling language. And the first thing we have is our class name. The next thing we need to store is uh, information about the card objects. So um, what defines the card? Well, if I look at the card, the things that define it are the face name. So whether it's um, an ace, a jack, a 10, or the suit, a diamond, a spade, a heart, or a club. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define what are called instance variables. An instance variable is really just a, a variable like you would find in any method. The only difference is that we put them at the class level, so they're accessible from any method, and we make them private so that they can't be uh, modified without using our customized get and set methods. And then the last thing we put into our class diagram are the actual methods that we want our card objects to have. So in this case, I'm going to have what are called get and set methods. And the, as the name suggests, they either get information about the instance variables or they will set information about the instance variables. And we'll also get uh, the face value. So we're not going to store the value of the cards, but we need some way of comparing the cards. So is a three greater than a two. So we'll have a method for that. And the two string method is just a little method that we're going to create uh, to represent the card as a string. So let's get started. If I go into IntelliJ, I've created a project here uh, called Visual Deck of Cards. And so far, the only thing that I've put into this project is uh, a little folder here with some images in it. And these images are just images of cards. We're not going to use them in this video, but we will come back to them in, uh, in the video where we create the GUIs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click under the source directory and say new Java class. And because we've done the design up front, we know a lot of the information that we need to build in our class. So I know the name of the class has to be card. So in here I'm going to type card. And then I have my instance variables. So I'm going to add those now. Now, for now, I'm not going to actually use the image um, because in order to use it, I need to create a, a GUI. Otherwise, uh, this will not compile. So I'm just going to comment this out for now. But we will come back and we will add the, the image uh, later. The next thing we need to add is something called a constructor. Now, the goal of a constructor, it's like a very special method within a class. It's what the system will call to create a new instance of our objects. And what I like to make sure that my constructors do is I want them to configure my instance variables. So when my constructor is done running, my object should be in a valid state. So to create my constructor, I'm going to right click. I'm going to generate constructor. I hold down shift key and I can select both of my instance variables. And if I hold uh, Alt and Shift at the same time, I can select different rows and I can overwrite 
some of these. Now, the reason that I'm overwriting these is that <clears throat> what's done by default <clears throat> does not uh, handle any validation. So I want to use my system uh, set methods to validate these inputs to make sure that I have a valid face name and a valid suit. <clears throat> so if I right click again and say generate, now I'm going to say getter and setter. Again, I'm going to select both of these and say OK. And now I have get methods. So these are private instance variables. I cannot access them outside the class. But I can call this method, which can return the values within. And then what we have here is set face name, this default method for setting the face name. And I need to think about what is a valid face name? So valid face names, I'm going to say it's two, three, four, five. Jack, Queen, and King. Any one of those is a valid face name. So ideally, what I want is something that's going to look like, well, if, uh, you know, uh, some collection, I don't know, we'll call it valid face names, Valid face names contains the face name being passed in. Then we'll set our instance variable. Now the thing is, we don't have a set of valid face names yet, so we need to create that. So let's build another method. And you may be wondering to yourself, why is this method static and this method is not? Well, <clears throat> when I create a card object, anything that is unique to the card object will not be static. It'll look like this. But anything that is uh, generic for all cards, I will make static. So in the case of what are valid face names, that's going to be consistent for all card objects. So what I'm going to do is I will make it static and then I won't need to have a specific card to call this method, which will be useful later. So I'm going to say return arrays as list and then I can just put in all of my card face names. So now I have a method that will return a list with all of my valid face names, and I can now use this method. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say, create a list of string objects, and I'll call it valid face names equals, and then I'm just going to call the method I just wrote. So get. So now I have. I have a collection, and that collection can validate if the face name is within it. And <clears throat> the other thing I'm going to do is, because I wrote all of these in lowercase, I'm going to make sure that when I'm doing the comparison, I'll do it in lowercase. So I'm going to say face name equals whatever the face name was, but in lowercase. 
Now, this isn't quite done yet, but I want to show you uh, the value of, of uh, how this will work. So I'm going to go in here and say new Java class, and I'm going to call it main. This will be what we use for our testing. So I'm going to say, Okay, so here I'm going to create a valid card called the Ace of Spades. And if I print it to the screen, to run the main here, it builds. And what it builds is something that says card at and it's hex numbers, which is the generic two string method um, uh, within the object class. So first let's let's update that. Let's update that two string method. And you can see when I write this that IntelliJ actually tells me that this overrides the method from the language dot, sorry java.lang.object. Uh, area that that's because everything is an object in Java, so you will automatically inherit from that particular class. So here I'm going to say return and it'll be whatever the face name is of and then the suit. So if I hit play. You can see we've got the ace of spades. Now, if, if I put an invalid uh, face name in, I don't want to actually create a card object. So if I try to create an invalid card, so I say card, card two equals new card, and uh, let's call it the truck of hearts. Right? This should fail. I don't want to have a card if it has an invalid state. So if I tried to print out this card right now, let's see what happens. So we get the ace of spades. I got created and that's fine. But with truck, we still got a card object, something that we could refer to. But the problem is the face name is null. Nulls you know, computer term for it's undefined. Um, <clears throat> that means we actually have a card object in an invalid state. So we don't want that. So what we're going to do is right here where we've got um, our if statement. So if we if we have a valid face name, we're setting the instance variable, right? See how it's in purple? That's referring to these instance variables up here that are also in purple. But if we don't have a valid face name, we need to handle that too. So what we're going to do is we're going to say else, and we're going to throw a new legal argument exception. So what this will do is it will actually stop the program from running. And that's a good thing. We don't want the program to run with invalid objects. So in here, I have the opportunity to pass along a message to um, who's ever doing the development to see or to explain to them why the program just blew up. And you've probably seen lots of exceptions if you've been programming in Java. So I'm going to say valid face names are, and I already have a collection, right? It's called valid face names. So I'm just going to say plus valid face names. So it will actually show the user all these possible face names. So let's run our program again. Now this time when it runs, we get the ace of spades, but then our program stops running. We get a stack trace, which is a good thing. And it actually steps you through how we got to this exception. And the exception tells us valid face names are two, three, four, five, all the way through. So that's a good thing. We are not able to create 
an invalid card object. So now if I change this to be a valid face name like three and I hit play, it's going to work. So we have two valid card objects. Now we need to do the same type of thing for the suit because right now we're not validating the suit at all. If we go to the set suit method, whatever is passed in is considered to be valid. So if I put in uh, the three of uh, boats, right? if we hit play, it thinks it's a valid, it's a valid state, which it's not. So we're going to go into the card class here and I'm going to use the exact same technique. So I'll create this static method that will return a list of valid suits. And then down here, I'm going to say list type string valid suits equals and I'll call my method. And now I can also make the suit uh, lowercase. So I'm going to say suit, suit to lowercase. And then I'm going to say if valid suits contains suit that we're looking for. It's valid, otherwise, throw any legal argument exception, and that will be valid suits are okay. So the intent here is that I will ha give a useful message if we have an invalid suit. If we have a valid suit, then we're going to set the instance variable. And you can see this dot suit, right? See how it's in the purple? That's referring to our class level variables way up at the top here. You can see it's highlighted as well. Um, those are our instance variables. So let's go back to main. If we try to run it, it should blow up this time. It does. It says we got an illegal argument exception, valid suits are, tells us they're valid suits. So if I change this to be, let's pick one of these diamonds, play. We now have valid ace of spades and a valid three of diamonds. So we've got two card objects and our system is ready to roll.